one day Tesla is gonna contact me and say, hey, come on, bring your car in and we're gonna change your chip out and then I'll have all the latest features. So I'm often asked, what is the difference between autopilot and full self-driving? So there are a few other options that we can talk about, but for now we're just gonna pretend that you're buying a brand new Tesla uh, and it either comes with autopilot, which is now standard on every Tesla, except one, comment down below if you know what the one is, and full self-driving, which as of today, January 2020 is a $7,000 option. So I thought it'd be best just to demonstrate for you. But first of all, I have to say thank you to my newest Enhanced Autopilot patron, Robert H. Thank you so much, Robert. Stephanie and I really appreciate it. I do keep these in the front with me wherever I go. Thanks, everybody. This is autopilot. This is what you're going to get. So I have full self-driving, and there are some features that I can't turn off because of that. But if you have standard autopilot, it will keep your lane. So you see the two blue lines here. I, I don't have to touch the wheel. Although if I wait long enough, it will bother me to touch the wheel, as you can see right there. This little blue graphic comes up. If you keep ignoring it, the car will pretty much just stop in its lane and put their hazards on. So I put my hand back on the wheel. And with standard autopilot, if you put your turn signal on, nothing happens. Now, of course, because I'm on this road, there's nowhere to turn. But if I was on the highway with standard autopilot, my turn signal's on, the car's just going to keep driving as if nothing's happening. It's going to ignore that. The other part of autopilot is the adaptive cruise control. So you can see there are some cars far up ahead. But I have my speed set at 60 in this blue circle. That 60 means that's the max the car will go. On local roads like this, you can only go five over the posted speed limit, which actually the speed limit here is 50, but it's wrong in the map, which is good for me. But let's say there was somebody in front of me going 50 miles an hour, then my car would go 50 miles an hour, would match them. I can use this scroll wheel here to set my following distance, and we're about to come up on a stop sign, and autopilot does not react to those yet, so I'm just gonna flick up on the stock here and let my regen slow me down and I will take over at this point. So that is pretty much all the standard autopilot will do. With standard autopilot, you also get adaptive cruise control. So if you just click down on the stock once, now my speed is set at 58. I'm still steering, I have to stay within my lane. But again, if there's a slow car in front of me, my car will slow to keep from hitting them and just kind of keep pace with that car. Now there are active safety features in autopilot, uh, things like lane keep assist, uh, if you go to drift out of your lane, let's see here, it doesn't work up there. So the lines turn blue, that's my car has bumped me back into my lane. That comes standard. And so this time it's not doing it, um, but most of the time it will do that for you to keep you in your lane. And it's just a backup. It's not something you're supposed to rely on. It's not anywhere near as good as actually having autopilot on, but that comes standard in every car. Also stoplight and stop sign detection does come in standard autopilot but no level of autopilot or full self-driving, again, as of this video, will react to the stop signs and stoplights. If it sees that you're on autopilot, it looks like you're gonna go through a red light or a stop sign, the car is just gonna throw a warning at you and hope that you take over. Once you upgrade to full self-driving, the first thing I wanna say is, as of today, there are no cars that actually fully drive themselves. It's just the name Tesla gives their advanced software because of their hope of eventually and hopefully soon having the car actually fully driving itself in most conditions, meaning it can do red lights, it can do stop signs, uh, it can do roundabouts, things like that, and you still will have to pay attention, but the car should be doing pretty much all of it. I think within the next few months, the goal of Tesla is to get these cars driving you from home to work with minimal interventions. Of course, in some corner cases or weird scenarios, you may need to take over, uh, but for the most part, the goal is that you can get in your car, it'll take you where you're going, and that's it. So for the next part, to show some of the full self-driving features, we need to hop on the highway. So let's do that and check those out. Okay, so now that we're on the highway, you can see we have this navigate on autopilot button. That is full self-driving specific. If you double tap on the stock, now you get this blue line. And that means that the car is able to make lane changes, uh, do interchanges from one highway to the other, and also take exits. So if we go into the autopilot settings, you can see there are some different options down here for your full self-driving or navigate on autopilot specific features. So you can turn on navigate on autopilot, which again allows the car to make its own lane changes. And then you can go into this customized tab and I'll let you check out those settings. Right now I actually have my uh, confirmations turned on. So the car has to ask me before it changes lanes. Um, but with full self-driving, if I hit the turn signal like that, the car will make a lane change. If you're in standard autopilot and you hit the turn signal, like I said before, the car's not gonna do anything, but all you need to do is turn the steering wheel, it'll allow you to steer, you can change lanes, and then you just double tap this again to turn autopilot back on. So here's an example of navigate on autopilot. Um, if I had 
confirmation off, it would just do this itself. But if I just hit the turn signal, now it'll change lanes. So it told me, hey, you should change lanes to get in the faster lane because this person is going slow. Okay, so it's a different day, but to turn off your lane change confirmations, you actually have to be in park. So I've turned these off, so now the car can start a lane change and do the lane change all on its own as long as your hand is on the wheel. If your hand is not on the wheel, you'll get a different kind of blue wavy line here. And then once you put your hand on the wheel and the car can detect it, it'll complete the lane change. There are also, of course, different settings in here. Um, Speed-based lane change is disabled. So this will only then change lanes to follow your route. It won't do it based off the cars around you. And then mild average in Mad Max isn't how the lane change is made, but it's how often it's made. So just a little bit of difference in speed, your car's changing lanes. If you switch to mild, then there needs to be a big difference in speed for your car to want to change lanes. I normally keep this on average. Okay, so you can see here it wants to change in the faster lane. There is a semi next to us. This blue wavy line is because my hand isn't on the wheel. So even if nothing was in the way, it wouldn't make the lane change. So now that I put my hand on the wheel, you can see this blue wa wavy line went away. There is a guy there, but uh, he gave us enough space to get over and the car did that all on its own. I did not change lanes. So a couple of the things for the full self-driving lane changes, hopefully I don't look too stupid here, but if you go to change lanes and there's a car in the way, uh, the, the car simply won't do it. It won't change lanes. So if I wait until I'm right next to this truck here, um, I can turn my turn signal on and you will see that the car will not change lanes. So I waited because what, what my car is going to do, so let me cancel that. What my car is going to do when I turn my turn signal on is you saw that was red for a second there. My car is going to hit the brakes so that I can get behind it um, and change lanes that way. So the other thing is the full self-driving auto lane changes will not change over a solid line. So if I turn my turn signal on here um, and everybody's going to think I'm weird, um, you can see the car's not red because my car just is like, eh, I don't know, there's nothing I can really do about that. <laughs> oh my gosh, everyone probably thinks I'm stupid. Um, but my car thinks there's nothing I can do about that, it's a solid line, I'm not going to go over that. Um, so it just simply won't complete the lane change. So when autopilot's on, there is a little bit of resistance in the wheel, but when your turn signal is actually on and you go to brake free, basically of, of autopilot, it's a lot easier than if the turn signal's off. So if you have standard autopilot, you want to just turn your turn signal on and then change lanes because it'll make it a lot easier on you than having to kind of yank the wheel over. Just like in standard autopilot, you can see here, you do have to keep your hands on the wheel. If you don't have your hands on the wheel long enough, the car is going to bug you about it and ask you to apply slight force to the wheel. So just a slight turning force in either direction. You want to hold it. You don't want to wiggle it. Um, sometimes that works, but it's not really the appropriate thing to do. Your other option to get rid of that nag is to use either scroll wheel button um, if you change your speed or change your volume on the radio and also hitting the turn signal will show the car that you're paying attention. So here you can see the speed keeping of autopilot. Again, my max speed is 78. I can increase that as much as I want all the way to 90, which is the max. And the car's not gonna go any faster than the car in front of me. So it's just using the car in front of me as kind of its guide on the speed to go. Currently I have my following distance set at one, which for me personally on the highway is usually pretty good. You can see the gap is still pretty good. If I count the time delay between the cars, it's right around two seconds. Um, it could be a little longer to be a little safer, um, but with autopilot's quick response time, this for me, especially when there's a little bit of traffic, is a good gap um, or else people keep cutting you off. Some of the other features you get when you purchase full self-driving, you get auto park, um, which doesn't work all that well, although I did use it the other day to parallel park and it was like perfect and awesome and I really liked it. You also get smart summon, which allows you to bring the car to you from up to 200 feet away in a parking lot. Uh, you just hold a button on your phone on the app and the car will come find you. It works okay. The max speed is five or six miles per hour, so it's a little bit slow. Um, but with everything, it, it gets better over time. Even this feature I'm using now, this Navigate on Autopilot, when it was first uh, announced, you actually, it didn't make its own lane changes. You had to make them yourself. Um, and then when it could make its own lane changes, it wasn't that great at them. And now it's really, really good. I mean, I have multiple days where I drive to work and I don't do anything on the highway. The car does it all. What is that? A lifted Suburban. Oh, buddy. Um, the other thing you get when you purchase full self-driving is the promise of all future upgrades to make your car full self-driving capable. Now, of course, this could be shut off at some point, but as of today, the car is surrounded by eight cameras on the outside and then one interior camera if you're in the Model 3 and the hardware 3.0 chip. I actually don't currently have the latest hardware in my car, but because I have the full self-driving option, 
one day Tesla is gonna contact me and say, hey, come on, bring your car in and we're gonna change your chip out and then I'll have all the latest features. I'm really not missing much. I'm not missing any functionality, but my display currently doesn't show everything. So the hardware three will show traffic cones and stop signs and stoplights and things like that. Again, it doesn't react to, to those, but it can display them on the display. Uh, but my car can't do that, but soon it will be able to once I get that included hardware upgrade. So the big question I'm probably gonna get here is, is full self-driving worth $7,000? And I get that question a lot. And it's it's a really tough question for me. And, and to be honest, the answer is always changing. But as of January 2020, $7,000 overall, I'm gonna have to say no, but it's really close because seven grand is a lot of money. And the functionality you get, I mean, if I just turn this off, I mean, there, I, I'm basically using standard autopilot now. And like, this will get me pretty much all the way to work. And to have to do lane changes yourself, I mean, that's the biggest thing right now you're getting with full self-driving, in my opinion, is the auto lane changes and like to pay seven grand for that. Now, of course, the other included benefits like uh, summon and the auto park, those are nice, but as of today, they're not all that useful. Auto park actually works really well for me, but I hear a lot of complaints of people that don't like it. It is a little slow, and for the most part, you can just do the parking yourself a bit faster. Besides maybe that parallel parking I did the other day was really good. I, I couldn't have really done it all that much faster, but the perpendicular parking is, is not all that special. The one thing that would really make me say that you should get the full self-driving option for $7,000 is that over time, as Tesla adds more features to these cars, that full self-driving option gets more expensive. So just a few months ago, it was actually only $6,000. So the biggest thing that would make me say that you should spend the $7,000 on full self-driving is that over time, full self-driving gets more expensive as Tesla adds features. So right now it's 7,000. A few months ago, it was actually only 6,000. But once they added the uh, Smart Summon, they raised it to 7,000. And I do feel that within the next few months, they're gonna add some really cool abilities to full self-driving. Now they are delayed a lot on some of the things they've been promising, um, but they're promising some pretty cool stuff. And that's kind of the way it goes. Tesla's usually late with stuff. But lately, Tesla's been showing that they're not doing that anymore. They are under-promising and over-delivering. And better late than never. And eventually, we are getting these features. At least the stop sign and the stoplight recognition, it's coming. And, and in my opinion, it's coming soon. Uh, within the next three months or so, I think we're gonna have that on Hardware 3 with full self-driving. And at that point, if they raise the price another grand, you know, $8,000, then it may become worth it if it does those things well and you'll be kicking yourself if you didn't spend the seven grand. And what if they raise it even more than $1,000 and make it something like 10 grand because the abilities are so good? That would be my biggest fear is just FOMO, fear of missing out and not wanting to lose that opportunity to have full self-driving where at 7,000, I could have swung it, but it was expensive. And now if it's 10 grand, it's like, oh, I, I can't afford it, I'm not gonna do it. But then you're missing out on all those cool things. So that would be the one thing to kind of push me over the edge to say that you should get it. But of course it's up to you. Some people seven grand is nothing. Some people seven grand is like a ton of money. I know to me, if it was seven grand when I bought it, I don't think I would have done it. But those are my thoughts on full self-driving and the price. I will probably use this video as a reference um, until some big, huge features are released and, and everything changes. Um, but for now, it's, it's very hard for me to recommend because $7,000 is just so much money. All right, and just to demonstrate one more ability of full self-driving here, you can see the car took the exit all on its own. I didn't do that. It turned the turn signal on, got to the off-ramp, and it is completing it. Let me know if you have any more questions about this. Um, I'm sure I didn't cover 100% of everything, but this is pretty much what you can expect as of January 2020. Uh, for your full self-driving versus autopilot. Now, there are some other things about used cars I, I could cover, but I think that may be better for another video. Um, if you have questions about that, it, it, the gist of it is there's enhanced autopilot, which is, as of today, the same as full self-driving, although you won't get the hardware three upgrade. And there are cars that don't have autopilot, but if they were made after a certain date, you can purchase it online. You can purchase base autopilot for 3,000 or full self-driving. Um, uh, for 7,000 on top of that, I believe. But this should be pretty much what you need to know for purchasing a new Tesla January 2020. If you're watching this in the future, even just like a couple months, like March 2020, um, things could be different. So, so comment down below and ask. I'll, I'll still respond to you even in a few months. 
um, and I may have actually updated a video if there are some huge changes. Uh, but overall, th this should be a pretty good gist of what you need to know to decide between full self-driving and autopilot. Welcome to the end of the video. If you're new here, which you probably are because over 80% of my views come from people that are not subscribed. What's up with that, guys? This is where I answer a question from you, so just a quick one today. Dirty Tesla, do you think the speed, 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds, is slow? I want to get the Model Y. Should I get the extra 20 miles of range of the 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds? Heck no, 5.5 seconds is not slow. That is still a really fast car. You will get used to the acceleration. If you get in the performance version and then go to the 5.5 seconds, it'll seem slow, but that is by no means a slow car. I would want the extra range, personally. That's what I would want. Uh, but if you're just basing it off that 0 to 60, save the money, get the slower time, unless you want to you know, take it to the track. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. You'll see me in the next video.